Hey Dave Ramsey, Stephen Curtis Chapman here, your old pal. And uh, man, 25 years, how's that possible? You must have started when you were like 12. Um, but congratulations on 25 years of great work, inspiring people, helping a lot of folks, and uh, proud of you, brother. Well, thank you, my friend. One of the nicer humans you will ever meet on the planet. Good guy, really good guy. Well, in our 25th year anniversary uh, celebration here on the Dave Ramsey Show, we're taking a segment every so often and just reminiscing um, our produ producers and uh, creative team got together and came up with some subjects for us to reminisce over over the time. And, um, you know, I get, we all kind of got to laughing about what we used to have to deal with to do a radio show. Uh, when we first started, of course, technology was a whole, whole lot different than it is right now. And so the stuff we dealt with, we actually had a reel-to-reel -reel tape. You ever seen those great big old reels of tape? And uh, that's how we would do our commercials, of course, was with reel-to-reel -reel tape. And um, if you've never used one of those things, you can stop the tape and then, you know, dial it back and listen to it in slow motion as you're dialing it with your hands back and, and hear a certain place. So if you're cutting a commercial and you mess something up, you can dial it back to there and then cut over the top of, and that was how we would do an edit. Worst case, we would take a razor blade and cut the tape and piece it together, repiece it together with other, with a special tape uh, to put it back together. And we were literally editing by cutting tape with a razor blade to put a commercial back together. And then, of course, once we got it solid, we would re-record it onto these uh, eight-track looking things called carts for cart machines. And uh, if you ever went into a music studio in those days, there were racks and racks and racks and racks and racks. I mean, hundreds and hundreds of uh, these carts looked like an eight-track machine, but all it had was one song on each one. And so the way a DJ in those days, they didn't spin records. Uh, they, they would set up, you'd have two or three cart machines, and you had one with a commercial in it one with the last song in it and one with a song coming up and you just had to you know hit the play and they were staged so the next one would automatically kick off as that one as that commercial ended it would kick the next one off and all you had to do is just stay ahead of it and keep it loaded uh keep the, all three cart machines loaded because it would cycle back through them or four or five or whatever there were but it and so we would record the commercials onto those carts then and do that of course there was not any um uh email or anything like that in those days. We did have a fax machine. Remember those? Remember that? We had one of those in the studio. And so we had a phone number that you would call in, a call-in number. Uh, and today, of course, we have a call-in number. We have Twitter. We have email. We have lots of ways you can contact the show, and we'll read your tweets or your Facebook post, or uh, you can email at DaveOnAir at DaveRamsey.com, right? That's how we do it today. In those days, though, it was just the phone number, or you could call the fax number and fax in your question. But we, you would hear the fax over the air. You'd hear it in the background. We finally figured out how to turn the ringer off so you didn't hear it ring, but when people started faxing in, you know, the, you would hear, the other listeners would hear it out there, and then we'd tear it off and read someone's question that they had faxed in or their statement that they had faxed in over the air if we wanted to, just like if we want to read your email or your tweet now, we do, that kind of a thing. And it, it's how we put the show together. The studio that we were doing the show in originally was a, uh, a studio at WSM FM 95, which is a country station here in Nashville. And um, the talk radio station that we were on at that time, WTN, was in, housed in that studio. And they had not, it was not a real, I mean, they had the radio, real radio studios for the country DJs because that was big time. But the talk, we had a studio that the producers were in the same room with us. They didn't have the uh, glass separating us. And so when Blake was taking a call and screening a call, sometimes you could hear him talking over the air because he was in the same room with me. We did have a piece of plexiglass. They hung from two chains uh, from the ceiling to try to buffer the sound. But, you know, and then you just walk around the end of the plexiglass and talk. We did not have any, you know, today if I want to talk to James or to Kelly or to Zach, I'd have to push an intercom button because they're in a soundproof room. I'm looking at them through 
uh, two panes of glass that are soundproof. But, uh, um, you know, I, just, I have to talk through an intercom if I want to do that while I'm on the air. Those days, we just started talking about it. Finally, we built our own studio and our own building, and uh, we didn't have to drive across town to do the show. And it was basically we took two closets that were side by side, and we put Blake's little uh, little board, uh, which was like 18 inches by 18 inches, a little tiny uh, production board in there and a phone system in one side. We knocked a hole in the closet wall between us and put a piece of plexiglass in that so that we had a, a window to look through. But again, it wasn't soundproof. We could talk through it. And so and went down to um, uh, Staples or Office Max or something and found a press board, you know, those sawdust tables with the Formica uh, tops and that kind of thing. We found one in the corner. I think I paid $4 for it. It was in the scratch and dit corner. Brought it back in. That was my table. We drilled holes in that and put the mic stands in those holes, those uh, uh, arms that come up, you know, the spring-loaded things to hold the microphones. But you couldn't see it. It was on radio. We didn't care what it looked like. We just cared how it sounded. But it didn't even sound good. The microphones were good. We had good quality mics, but the uh, the rooms we were in were not soundproof, and so we ended up putting up yellow caution tape across the hallway when we were on the air because people in our, in our office would walk past our show, walking down the hall, talking while we were on the air, and you would hear their conversation come over the air because the door wasn't soundproof, and it was that bad. It was that bad, but we pulled it off, and 99% of the time, you guys had no idea out there that you were listening to something that was barnyard and put together with paper clips and bailing wire and fish hooks and duct tape, right? I mean, really. Uh, then we had uh, streaming came to town. We started doing streaming the show. No one did audio streaming, and it was a big problem because uh, all the radio stations were afraid they were going to go broke, that no one would advertise after streaming, and of course... Streaming, live streaming, you had to be listening to the show, and most of the people didn't have enough, didn't have enough uh, Wi-Fi power to do it with wireless. So if you wanted to hear streaming when it first came out, you're at a hardwired computer sitting at a desk somewhere. We put all three hours on streaming as soon as it was available, and everybody thought we were, like, losing our minds. Uh, in 2006, we moved from analog to digital, finally, put in all new equipment, all digital everything, uh, and that's the year that Matt Aaron, uh, who's our chief engineer, joined us. Now, Matt is a, a genius. Uh, he's one of these people that can build something from nothing when it comes to running wires, when it comes to uh, keeping things running and updated, keeps the show running 24-7, and um, he can take apart microphones, computers, he doesn't just have to buy stuff and plug it together. He can take it all apart, put it back together, and cause it to work, and does frequently uh, because we're pretty scrappy around here. And so he keeps everything running and updated, and this show is never had, has never had technical problems that were insurmountable or huge or ongoing or systematic or systemic or whatever while Matt has been here since 2006. The show works because of that. And so uh, if you didn't know the way our show works, the way you get to listen to it, if you're listening on terrestrial radio, is the show leaves here on a dedicated digital fiber optic line, goes to New York City to ABC, uh, who we buy our digital satellite time from. They shoot it up to the satellite. We call that the bird. They shoot, shoot it up to the bird. And then the radio stations take it off the bird, uh, meaning they receive from space the signal with their large dishes and they run it through their broadcast facility out over their antenna and into your car and all of that happens in less than a second and a half it's pretty amazing technology if you think about it and that's how 588 radio stations are hearing me talk right now that's pretty cool and of course we can do tv spots the same way we redid the studio in 2013 for a video channel which has become a big deal of course, the podcast has launched out and has become absolutely huge. Uh, technology is our friend now. Man, it, we, you know, we used to have to ship commercials across the country by tape. Now we send them by you know, email. It's ridiculous. It's wonderful. It's come a long way, baby, I'll tell you that. This is the Dave Ramsey Show. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, click the subscribe button to get the latest content and check out these other great clips from the show.